a little bit further. One more. There we go. Needed to get that out of there. I had it sitting back there because I was like, oh, it looks kind of cool in this little area, that cove that's in there for the tortoise. But you can't water when the pot's at an angle. It was leaning, so I would water it. It was just blowing right out of there. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Go ahead and get that put back where it belongs. Pull this Dracaena out of here and get that Adenidia palm slid back over and see, see if that even looks right. I think it might look kind of weird with the bamboo being so big. Yeah. I don't know, it doesn't have as much of the appeal as it used to when there wasn't as much bamboo here. The thing is, I love the bamboo, I'm not going to move it. It's so great for the majority of the year, other than summer. But, you know, that's, I can work with this. We'll make it work. Maybe I just need to prune or twist. Maybe I just twist that around. I don't know. Anyways, hey, what's up, Garden Friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? You're doing well. I'm great. I have no idea what we're going to be doing in this vlog. going to try and make it a long one. I guess people seem to enjoy the long videos and... It's not as easy to get out two videos a week as it used to be, so at least I can make up for that by giving extra long Saturday videos. The only thing that I have to do is get the impatience planted right behind, right where the beach ball is. Over here, down here on the berm. That has to get done. And after that is done, I'm caught up and back to that fun place of being able to go, oh, well, I just need to walk around and do stuff and do normal garden things pot up the hydrangeas and those things, underplant them. So yeah, I think that's what I would like to work on. Go ahead and get all these impatience planted up. Probably have to run to a nursery and buy some more. I feel like I bought a ton, but something tells me I'm gonna wanna plant them close together and it's probably not gonna be enough. So subtle. Turbo, can you give me a minute? I just got a plant in the mail. After I just said the thing with the Wednesday videos because I was thinking I wasn't gonna have time to do a Wednesday video this week, I got plants in the mail. The Tacarum Cadetum Eruption. This is all the stuff I got from Plant Delight. It was all in a video some time ago, and I forgot that there was still a plant on the way. It's a plant I'm really excited about, so that's fun. I'm going to get that unboxed. I was just sitting here, looking over there at the hibiscus, get a little bit closer. Look at them. Aren't they looking great? I'm really torn. I said I didn't want to have those right next to each other because they're different colors, but... I'm kind of liking the way it looks. They both need to be potted up, though, but moved into larger containers because they are thirsty. Hibiscus, in general, thirsty plants, right? But those, I have to drench, like, just drench every day. It takes an eternity, and that also means like, they're not getting nutrient. I have the slow-release hibiscus stuff in there, but that's not going to do it, right? When they're, we don't need, I'm, I'm going to repot them at some point. I'm going to try and find some pots that are large enough for them in the garage. If I can find them, we'll repot them. I can talk about all that then. I was thinking, though, about just keeping one of them over here and then putting the other one, like my, my attempt at keeping the sun off my legs, it's not working very well. Not at all. I have a UPF blanket that I'll throw in in a minute. On the other side of the hot tub, so we have the Eureka Palm on one side right there, then maybe doing the other hibiscus right there. Probably doing the seminal pink right there. Maybe the yellow one. I'm not sure. I can figure that out. Either way, they have to be bumped up into larger containers. So that's something else I'd like to get done. I'm also currently ordering the parts to finally get the fertilizer system set up for this hose over here. Just completely forgot about it. I forgot I even had the thing. So much happened over the last few weeks that I wasn't paying attention to what I had stored away in my little gardening cabinet over there. So that, there's your useless update. What are we, three minutes in? Nothing's happened yet, but... Turbo's being cute, so that's fine. Got a new bull bogger. Don't know if this is going to work out. Well, the one I usually use is a six inch auger, and that's just too much for those little impatience. Things that are in six packs, they don't need something this big, or that big. This is probably the perfect size. It's just a bull bogger. It was said to be three inches. I think that's more like two. Uh, I'm gonna start popping holes in the ground, get these impatience planted, and then repot some hibiscus trees. I went through in this whole area and pulled out most of the pedicets that were in the front, which is not a big deal. They'll come back next year. They always do. There's no shortage of them. They're everywhere out here. And found this little guy, which is something that I think I just pulled up when I pulled up one of the pedicets. That's a tulip. A tulip that has split and is starting to divide. There's its old bloom stalk. That's what's going on underground when we let our tulips go dormant for the year and 
They're waiting for them to come back, and that's what it looks like when they start to divide. I thought that was kind of cool. I'm going to stick it back in one of the holes when I get these impatience in the ground. I've also noticed that, once again, my inability to decipher shades of color has come around to bite me in the butt. It's supposed to be pink and orange. There are various shades of pink. That was unintentional. The orange, uh, well, they're more of a salmon, and I have one six-pack of, eight-pack, that is, of actual orange. Just, there's one. Only one of actual orange. And the other ones that I thought were going to come out and darken up, like, and turn into those, th that's what I wanted. They're just, they're the salmon color. I feel like this happens every year. They're different colors at the nursery, I swear. And then I bring them home and I'm like, what is this color? I didn't pick this out. There's red. I don't buy red impatience. They were more of a deep pink when I was seeing them. You know, they've been on the truck. They come off the truck and they were possibly in a greenhouse. And the temperature changes when things are cooler. That can affect the shades that you're seeing. It doesn't really matter. I'm not going to use the red. Since I only have one eight pack of the orange. And I don't think I have time to make it to a nursery to buy more. At least not right now then I think that the smart thing to do is to plant the orange ones first, get all the holes dug, and then randomly plop the actual orange ones in. That way they don't accidentally end up being clustered together someplace really close. And then everything else is just going to be completely random. And I'm wondering if this is going to be easier this year because, well, the auger's so long. My other augers, they're six-inch augers, they don't have a long pole on them like this. I don't know if that's going to be helpful or not. Oh, that was really smooth. Yeah, that's nice. I don't have to bend down and squat for every single hole that I dig. I'm gonna like this. All right, so <laughs> there's everybody's update. I'm gonna get all these holes dug and then I'm going to go through and sprinkle some compost onto the holes, possibly some slow release, and then fill them up with impatience. We'll come back and there will be updates. <laughs> it just held these up and then realized I don't know what I was gonna say about them. Holes are dug for the most part. I still need to do this whole area down over there. I'm not taking them down as far as I usually do just because it's the shade over there is so deep and the sprinklers don't hit that area down there as well as they used to. So what's the point, right? With these orange ones, I figured I should just go ahead and place them first. That wasn't even in frame, was it? Pretty sure I already talked about this since I only have the eight of them. But yeah, I know I'm getting them spread around more evenly or to my liking that is, that they won't end up having just like a big cluster of orange mixed in with everything else. I only have the eight of these, so I want to make sure that they're spaced out nice and evenly, which I don't think will be a problem. The bulb auger, I think I like it. It chokes up, it grips a lot more than my other one does, which isn't necessarily a terrible thing, it's just annoying, right? And I'm assuming that's just because it's a good, probably f three or four inches longer than my other bit. So it pulls itself down a lot deeper. And well, my ground over here isn't used to having things go down that deep in it. So there's more stuff for the auger to get choked up on. Also, it being more narrow means that the holes fill in pretty quickly. As I dig a hole right next to a hole, then the hole that I just dug gets filled in. Okay, and then I decided to not spread them out too evenly because, like I said, the further you go down here, the less the irrigation is effective from the sprinkler head that's over here. It just doesn't get things all that well down there. And there's so much less light. It's so dark down there. So I did still end up concentrating them more over in the very front of this berm. And I think that's good. Now I'm just going to go through and start popping in the pinks and the oranges and you know just it's gonna be colorful that's the whole goal here hopefully when we come back there's gonna be a lot of color over here oh that's nice look at all the color love it so i didn't plant as many as i usually do i forgot about that when i was saying i don't think i have enough I had to take into account that i have this row of game changer hydrangeas that got planted up here so where i used to have these impatience going all the way up closer to the laurel hedge instead i had to do like a singular sloop <laughs> sloop swoop in front of the ones that i have more towards the front of everything they are planted much closer together than normal and i don't have an issue with that some people might they're impatient they're pretty tough 
and we're late in the season here to getting them planted. Kind of. It's early June, so it's not really that late in the season. But typically I like to have them planted up in May. Uh, just hadn't gotten around to it yet because you know, there's stuff going on. And then I also didn't take them down as far. I sort of tapered them off, I guess is how you would say it. So there will be almost like a... Not, but what is that word when things fade into each other? I should know it because it's like my favorite thing in the world when the colors blend together. What is that? What's it called? Uh, you get my point. They're nice and heavy more towards the front and then they taper off to there being less of them towards the end. More concentrated here in the middle and then well, there's actually still pretty concentrated on each side of the front of this berm. It's hard to tell if this berm does have a line that it follows. So I went more heavy towards the very center of everything and then a little bit to each side and then let them taper off in each direction. That's what I was trying to say. Mostly have the light pink, the dark pink, and then I scattered around the lighter color. <laughs> Where'd it go? The lighter orange right there. And I had tried to avoid having them too close to the darker orange. So like the dark oranges, I went through and made sure to surround them with the other pinks and then did the same thing with the lighter oranges so that they wouldn't ever be stuck together and they would stand out. I think that's going to look nice. The thing with orange, it's one of my favorites. I could do this whole thing in orange and I'd be very happy with it. Orange stands out more, to me anyways. It a, has a higher contrast. So it's something I want less of. I want it to be an accent instead of a contrast. I want it to be something that helps bring out the colors around it instead of it taking away. If there's too much of it, it pulls your eye in and you miss everything else that's around it. So that's what's going on over here. And that was my reasoning behind what I did. Still have a few left. Down here, I've gone through, dug the bulk of my holes. And what I'm going to do this year that I don't normally do if you don't know why this is down here, there's a whole different video about that. Hopefully it'll be up by the end of the week or next week. I usually just take the impatience from here and down. The trees have grown so much that the further down you go, the more shade this is getting. So instead of doing three of them, I usually have a row of three that goes all the way across, or a column of three, and then a row that goes across. I'm doing two, because I just don't want to waste them, right, if I end up not having enough light down here for them. So what I'm going to do and I think this will work out fairly well, is get a red banana plant in this hole that I've already dug here, and then take the impatience somewhat around the front, not too heavily, and fill in everything that's in here back in the shade. I've wanted to do that for a while. Last year, when I was watching things grow, it became very clear that there just was not a lot of light back here, especially once I put an end set banana right here too. So you can see where the sun is, there's my shadow once there's an inset right here that's going to shade things even more back in there so i just can't fill it in with tropicals or some patients and things like i used to so i think the impatience would be a great option to take them all the way from that end bring them around come in here do a little swoop have them fill in everything i also have some shootgart canna rhizomes that i'm going to try and toss somewhere in this vicinity right here i think would actually be a great spot for them but i gotta think about that because i don't want to break up the impatience much but the impatience can go around them. Is this a paint? That's for paint. What the heck is this doing out here? I bet this is leftover from when they were working on the pool last fall. That would be my guess. So yeah, that's where I am right now. The bananas. We need to talk about them. I picked up these two beautiful Enset, Enset Morelia's Red Obsidian Bananas months ago. You have to get them right when the nurseries get them in. Around here anyways, they sell out very quickly. You can get them for like 30 bucks a pop. If you don't get them right when they get them in, then you go back to the nurseries sometime like now, and they're about 100 to $150 because they only get in the larger ones or they take a few of their smaller ones and pot them from the bigger pots a couple months past and they charge more for them. So they've been sitting around for a minute. And because of that, they've gotten some wonk. Where I had them, they looked like they were growing straight up. I mean, they were growing straight up. I just didn't realize that the pots had tilted. I'm not very concerned about this. Bananas will correct very, very quickly. I just figured I should give y'all a heads up that when I cut back, there's going to be <laughs> some weird looking stuff going on with the banana tree. I'm going to plant it the opposite direction of where it's going to be getting most of the sun. So it's going to be leaning that direction and it will, it'll pull itself up. It'll probably take a week or two, but it'll straighten itself out. Big dent, only 24 left. Like how I show everybody the dent that's been made before what I've done over here. Like I mentioned, I went at basically two rows of two, alternated and mixed up the colors the best that I could. Came around the front of the end set, which yeah, has the lean, but like I said, it'll straighten itself out. 
and filled in the back. I put a lot more of that kind of lighter apricot orange back into this area because in front of it we have all these vibrant pink wave petunias. I thought that would add for a better contrast to have the layers there. And I like the orange with the darker foliage and the lime green. I like the pink there too. I just like the way all those colors play together. But I'm going to have the tall lime green foliage here from the lime zinger xanthosomas with that orange behind them and then the variations of green and red inside of the end set. The diamond head looks like it's just now starting to root out and take off. So I left a big ring around that because I assume it's going to fill out and get quite large. At least it should. So there are some holes and gaps in here that was for a combination of reasons. One, it was just very difficult to plant back there. It's a lot of rocks and pebbles, so everything just kept filling back in and didn't feel great on the knees, but it's done. And I think that this is going to look absolutely beautiful when that fills in, having this wave of color that comes through and goes around that end set, swoops around that corner, goes all the way back, and then you can't really see what's over here, but you'll be able to see the color keep flowing all the way through there. Now, I was hoping that I would have enough to come in here and do underneath the mimosa tree and then up this hillside and then some on like this chunk of the hill over there. There's no way, but I do think I have enough to go ahead and at least get this area done. So I, that's actually pretty easy and self-explanatory. Just come in, pull out this pet set. It's got to clear the space out, which I needed to do anyways. I wanted things to be more open in front of the mimosa tree this year because I just don't like it when there's a ton of the big leaf stuff growing up in front of everything. Even back here, some of these are getting to be, oh, what was, that was just a cicada. <laughs> Got startled. They have quieted down so much, like I forgot that they were here. The problem is if you wait too long on these, they get pretty difficult to pull out. And I don't, like I said, I don't want them over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these <laughs> ripped out. <laughs> I'm gonna try. There we go. Some of them, it's gonna be easier than others. You get it. I'm gonna clear everything out in the front, leave the pulmonaria and the acanthus and get some color going over there. That's a big improvement. Things are nice and open. Look at all that color. I really like how the pulmonaria stands out now that things are all opened up in here. Came in and pruned back the foliage. So that's nice and open now. So now you get the picture, right? Have the swoops. Swooping around the Alexander, down around here, disappears a little bit, comes back, swoops forward, curves back in, swoops around, then comes up and fills back in. It'll be finished when I get some more to do up here and some over there. But for now, this is good. And I don't know, I may end up not even doing this stuff up there. Depends on the weather. The reason I really wanted to get this done today was one, it just needed to get done. Two, our forecast is about to drastically change. 72 right now and absolutely just amazing outside. But uh, in a couple days, it's supposed to be like 97. <laughs> so the summer's here, and uh, that's not when I want to be out here doing this type of work. It was a lot of squatting, so I'm glad to have that done. Oh, and I did water everything in with root and grow. I, I had some, so figured, why not? Not going to hurt. Maybe help get things kicked off a little bit faster out here, which would be nice. Speed things up, get them growing, and fill it in as quickly as possible. All in all, that was about 155, which... I know it sounds like a lot, but that's about half of what I planted last year, which is surprising because I was saying I didn't think I would have enough, but, you know, I only went two rows on the spot right here and didn't plant as many over there because I planted those Game Changer Hydrangeas, so that worked out well. And speaking of <laughs> the heat coming through, I just realized that I don't even remember what note I left off on, but if I was talking about how it's supposed to get pretty hot here, like really hot in just a couple of days, it means it's a good time to go ahead and get these hibiscus. <laughs> repotted. You're not even facing the camera. Come on guys, show everyone how beautiful you are. Beautiful hibiscus. So I have two over here. They're both in 12 inch containers. I'm going to bump them up into these 14, which are, I believe one of these is a 12 and a half gallon. The other one's a 15 gallon. It's the closest I could find size wise to something that was going to work for both of them. I mainly wanted these to be nice and rigid, sturdy containers so they can be moved around. One of them is going to end up being inside of a larger container down by the hot tub. We'll get to all that when it's time. My main thing was we just need to get this done. So what I've done here is blended up a loose, fairly loose, very organically rich potting blend that's going to hold on to a good amount of moisture, but still be nice and airy and drain really well. 
It's what those hibiscus are going to need. This blend is, uh, it's what I used in the last Saturday's video. It's basically one bag of all-purpose body mix to about half a bag of ocean forest mix. Saving some money that way. The microbes and things spread and multiply, so I don't have to use straight up ocean forest. And in fact, sometimes ocean forest holds on to too much moisture for the plants. Sometimes when I hem up on drip, it doesn't always dry out as quickly as I would want it to. I also added in some Mother Earth, I think it's called Farmer's Market blend. It's a it's a blend of like bone meal and seaweed and all kinds of good stuff for the plants. Help them get rooted, help them flower. Yeah, nice and fluffy, has some grit to it. The perlite. You have organics in there. Got the guano and all the fun stuff from the ocean forest and other stuff I added. This should be good for them. I'm just gonna pop them out and put them into new containers. I don't really think I need to get the tripod out and make a huge deal out of that, but if something comes up that I think is worthy of talking about, I will, but for the most part, I'm just gonna be moving them into new containers and filling them up with soil. Oh, okay. Kind of thought this might happen. Got a little bit of swirl going on down here. Not too much. It's just enough that I can really just go in here with my fingers and loosen it up. It's not very tight. Come down here and see the bottom of it. Hibiscus tend to get root bound very, very quickly. At least they're your first time potting them up initially when they've been at the growers and everything. They usually don't have a lot of soil. It's just a lot of roots. So always make sure to go in there and give them a tickle. You might have to use a box cutter, cut some X's in there if it's really tight. But with this, I think I can just loosen them up by hand. Yeah. See there? That's all I'm talking about. This is <laughs> If I let go, the whole thing's going to go tumbling. See how it's just loosened up enough that the roots are sticking out from the sides instead of being laid on the inside? That's all it needs. Doesn't need to be very much. Don't have to get too hardcore with it. This is loose enough that I think it was, well, really just in time. Another couple weeks, this may have needed a box cutter. <sighs> Quick and easy. I love a gorilla cart. Does anybody else you use your gorilla cart basically as a portable potting station? It makes it so much easier having a big bin where you can just shovel and dump and shovel and dump and not have to be very precise. And I just go through it and sweep off the excess lightly pack it down. You don't really need to pack soil down. I prefer to water it in and let it settle where it needs to, but these are standards. So very top heavy. That's a situation where I do like to pack it down just enough so that it's not going to go wobbly and get all wonky and loose. And now I'm going to move it. Maybe I should water it in and give it a day and then move it. Not that it's going to root out in a day, but just less stress on the plant. It, watch this. Even with one hand, I bet I can get this done in maybe a minute. Potentially, that's probably giving myself too much credit because I still have to get the hibiscus out of its pot. I don't know how easy that's going to be to do with one hand, or even possibly can I do it with one hand? I'm taking y'all with me. Give that a tug. There we go. Lay this down, come in here, rough up the root ball, which is the step I forgot when I said I bet I could do this in a minute. <laughs> get on the bottom of it all the way around. Don't want to miss any spots. Well, actually, it's okay if you miss a few. It's not like one missed spot is going to cause the whole thing to be root wrapped and destroyed. Get it in there. Is it going to stand up? Yep. You see what I'm talking about? You can just dump, scoop, dump, scoop, dump, scoop, and dump. 59 seconds. I know. Okay, technically it's not done. I still have to do this part right there okay yeah well here <laughs> now it's done minute and six seconds not bad love a gorilla card i just i couldn't help it i had to go back and get more i don't know why i felt like torturing myself by going hey i need to plant more of these it was just bugging me that i have them going from all the way over here all the way around Turn to the mimosa and I just I want it to finish it off. I want to get the row up here and the row up there in the shade. It needs to get done. That and I have a bunch of caladium bulbs that I want to be as a backdrop to the impatience. I can't really do that until I plant the impatience. I want their growth to be pretty on par or even. So I just need to get it done. I could have waited another week or so, probably. They would have caught up with each other, but I didn't want to. I want to get this done. I also, I need to move these. It's the next day, if you couldn't tell. I don't know how you would tell. Maybe the lighting's changed. I'm not really sure. But today, the heat moves in. It's supposed to be up into the 90s. Nice 20 degree leap from yesterday. And uh, that means it needs to, it needs to, it's time to move these hydrangea and willow planters from my front porch where they will be getting morning sun and afternoon shade. 
because they're going to fry out here. The hydrangeas are already starting to fizzle out, and they're not putting up any new growth, so I'm having a feeling they're not going to, probably not going to keep looking too hot, but that's okay. I can pull them out and replant with sun patients or impatient to get, you put something in that flowers really well, research some varieties of hydrangeas that stay small. I think some of the Let's Dance series, um, that some of those stay smaller, I think, I'm not sure. It's neither here nor there. Just saying that because at some point these are going to vanish <laughs> in this video. And uh, well, that's why. In fact, I should actually probably just do that now because, well, it's only going to keep getting hotter. So may as well get them out of here. Still have the dog collars over here. I need to put one of them back on this hydrangea tree. So I'm going to leave the seminal pink over here, I think, and put the yellow one down at the other end by the hot tub. I do have one pretty big problem. I don't know what I did with the auger bit. I remember, like, in my head, I can see it. I was standing over the gorilla cart when I had it full of soil. I attempted to use the auger bit to mix the soil, but that auger bit was, it was just too skinny. So I pulled it out, I reversed it to shake off the loose soil, pulled it out, and walked that way with it. And I've looked that way, I've been through the garage, I don't, I can't find it, what did I do with it? I'm definitely going to want that now that I have all these extras to plant. I also grabbed the Orange Sun Impatience because I was thinking that I will, I don't know why I'm telling all this now, maybe because I really just need to get to work and not talk so much once the heat gets here. So this way y'all know what's going on. I'm gonna alternate the orange and the uh, red candy Sun Patience up there on the hill around the Luko Kasia and Alo Kasia, around the elephant ears. I think that'll look nice, there's too much sun closer to the top of the steps for the regular impatiens. So I grabbed six of the compact oranges, and then these right here, those are for something else. I planted up some loyal lolly, some lollipop boxwoods at someone's home over the weekend, and uh, they want something with some color around them. So I was like, well, just like three sun patients around each one. They're the blushing orchid. It's kind of a white and hint of lilac maybe periwinkle it's a really pretty sparkly flower i thought those would look good around those okay i'm gonna i guess i'm going to move the willows and then try and find that dang auger bit what did i do with it that's so weird because i have a bucket that i keep those things in and it's not in the bucket but i remember walking in there shaking the dirt off of it in the driveway and i like remember setting it down but i don't see it that's weird what is that what is that i found a seashell he knows what's up. I think this is soft enough to throw in there. I don't know, Turbo. I don't want to tear up the liner, but it looks like he's already done a number on this thing. You want it? All right, throw it to the shallow end. There you go, Turbo. Let's go get it. You're gonna dive down and get it? Thinking about it. Did you find it? Where is it? Where'd it go? There you go. Good boy, Turbo. He got so excited when I pulled that seashell out from the landscape. It was hanging out over here. I started to clear out this area. Got the hydrangeas and the willow things moved. And we're all done now. Did he get it? He got out and then he got... Oh, he dropped it by the steps. Well, he... Sometimes he'll do that. He'll drop toys down and play with them. This area. Oh, it's a mess. Everything's been blocked by all these evergreens for the last few weeks, and I didn't even see what was going on over here. Luckily, it's all the stuff that just pulls right up. Not that big of a deal, right? And just coming and plucking, pull. Just not what I was expecting. Here, there's enough shade over here that the weeds wouldn't be too bad. And it looks like there's already some impatience in here that have receded from last year. On that note, I was thinking next year. Maybe I should try just seeding the impatience. I've done it before. Sometimes it takes a couple of applications to get it nice and even, but man, would it save a lot of time and money. And I could plant out the specific varieties that I really like, like the cosmic kind, the ones that have the multi-tone flowers on them. I never see those at the nurseries. I'm, okay, I've seen them at the nurseries this year, but they were only the, it was like a reddish one and I didn't really care for the way that one looked but the Cosmic Orange or one of the others, I think that would be a lot of fun. And I would have the freedom to do that with seed. You can just scatter them down, water them in, and boom, impatience. You could also start them in trays. I'm not gonna do that. Can you imagine how much shelf space it would take? At this point, 
There's eight here. So that's 64, and I planted 155 or 156 yesterday. I'm not going to set up an operation to start 200 impatiens from seed. Not happening. Yes, they are very easy to start from seed, so you wouldn't think that that would be something that would really matter, but it takes up a lot of space, and it's something else to take care of, especially when I know, because I've done it before, you can just take the seeds and just toss them. That's really all you have to do. Like I said, though, sometimes you have to do a few applications for things to come in nice and evenly. There's a lot of vineage going on over here. That's going to take a minute. You impressed, Turbo? Look at that. Another 72 in the ground. I started off by showing you the empties again. <sighs> Little winded. That's been a lot of work. This front row, though, quite pleasant to plant up. Didn't have to bend down. Everything was right there. It's like counter level. That was nice. Started from down there, worked my way up, came around the front, went over here, swooped around the viburnum, and comes back there to the front. I, or the back, I should say. I didn't have quite enough to make a line that goes all the way across everything in the back, but I figured that that's fine. I'm not really going to be able to see what's going on back that far anyways. And I would like to plant something large and evergreen right here. Can you can you guess why? Any, does anybody know? You, can you figure out what's going on there? Looks good. <laughs> I mean, you know, looks like a tragic mess right now, but it's going to look good once everything starts growing and doing its thing. And then I came up to the... Uh, Alocasia here and alternated the red candy and compact orange sun patients around those. I went a little bit far with the impatience on each side. Oh, I don't. What was in here? Must have been those red candies. I think the compacts were in those and that was. It doesn't matter. As I was saying, I did the same thing on the other side. Not as easy to see because this very, very, very thirsty Thai giant is laying down in front of it. The impatience on this side, there just wasn't a lot of room to work with. So it's just a single row of them that comes through to right here. I need to clean this out. And had I felt like doing that, then maybe I would have taken them further. But I ended up having exactly the right amount of impatience. So I figured this is good. This has to be good. We've planted well over 200 at this point. This is a good place to stop. Sometimes you have to just stop. There's enough here. You can see what I was saying though when I said I took some of them kind of far out into the sun, but I did that just assuming that in a week or two, this is the Leucocasia Tide Giant. That's going to be shading those. Maybe even the sun patients back there. You can see there's a big difference between sun on these steps. So symmetry-wise, I don't know what's going to happen there. I have always wanted to plant a trailer over each one of the corners here, but the growth just wouldn't be even, so I never have figure why bother okay that's good i did a bunch i have a bunch of yard waste to gather up tie up and get taken out and i don't know we'll pick up and do something else here at some point okay took a quick 15 minute break gotta get back to work though i want to get more done before the heat rolls in i know i said that i was gonna put the yellow hibiscus over there i think i changed my mind <laughs> no surprise there it is the seminal pink It'll always have a special place in my heart, and I think that I would like to have that closer down towards where I sit. And with all the pink that's over here, with the wave petunias, I sat over there and I looked at them for a while. I know it's weird that I didn't pick up the camera. I was on the glider. Usually you spend a lot of time talking while I'm over there swinging. The I don't know. It just all blends together. I think the yellow would be better contrast down here, and then I'd have my pink over on the other end where I want it to be. And this is a decision I do need to make now because I need to water and it would make more sense to move these before I water. Although, is it still wet from yesterday? Damp. Better. I almost went and picked it up from right here. I would have unpotted the entire thing. Maybe. Actually, maybe not. I might be able to just slide this down and get that on the dolly. Oh no. Why did I do that? I said it was going to happen and then I did it anyways. I was probably going to have to backfill it anyways after putting it on the cart and moving it around. I'd also like to get things cleaned up over here. This is just a disaster. Go ahead, pull some plants out of the way. Livestona, Rotundifolia. I haven't even talked about this one before, have I? Got that in the mail a couple of months ago. Showed up looking like garbage, but it looks like it's starting to push back out some new growth. I don't know if I'm that impressed with it. I think I might just be a fan of the Chinensis. It's a neat... I need to stay focused. <laughs> stay focused and we'll get back to talking about that palm tree at some other time when it's more appropriate. Fatsy, I need to repot this badly. Badly enough that before I forget, 
I know. Don't worry. I'm staying focused. I promise. Just saying that since I have it here, I may as well take it over here to the cart where I have the soil, set it down, and repot it. It's going in a big pot. I'll use one of the containers that those hibiscus were in. And I think that'll be the perfect upgrade for it for a year or two. They like pretty big containers for their roots. And that one hasn't had an upgrade in a few years. Which isn't great. That looks like crap. Okay. Got that set up. Did I dig that out enough? Dig out. Pull the garbage out from the bottom of the container enough? I don't have any soil in there. It's just full of old pottery. Like plastic nursery containers to fill up the bottom. So I'm just using it as a cash pot. Right? I don't need anything in the bottom. But this is deeper than I thought it was. That's probably fine. It's going to look so much better having that over here. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. Turns out it doesn't matter because the edge of the pot catches right on top of there. Going to need to put a trailer over that. That's going to bug me. Get something in there to help fill out the sides of the container. Probably sweet potato vine. Do I have any sweet potato vines left over here? I think I do. That would be perfect because they will grow quickly, be pretty low fuss, and cover up the front of that container in no time. Oh, licorice. I just bought two more of those to do a project at somebody else's house. I didn't even have to, because apparently I have two more of them right here. Yeah, I do. Look at that. I didn't even know they were hidden behind this beautiful variegated one. Isn't the variegated really pretty? It's called Licorice Splash. Love the foliage on that. That could be an option for that container, but I don't really know why I would put that over there. I feel like I'd never get to see it. Okay, let's come in here, do some backfilling, and Ipomeo. Over here in this corner, a, I believe this is Lavender Sky Wave Petunia. Not positive, I'll double check the name on that one. Another Ipomia Sweet Potato Vine over here on that side. These will fill out and cover up the front of this in no time. Let me double check the name on that Petunia, because it's one of my favorites. I love the color on it. Easy Ways, <laughs> Easy Wave Lavender blue sky. Sometimes I gotta pause, let my brain catch up with everything. Looks pretty good. I like it. I really like the pink over here. I think that that was the right move. Just because, like I said, it didn't make sense to have it on the other side because of all the pink. Actually, it would have been fine over there because there's a lot of pink, so it would have matched, but I like my hibiscus to stand out and have some contrast. And like I said, the seminal, it's one of my favorites. I wanted to be able to see it over here. The next thing I need to do is, well, I need to repot the Fetzia that I pulled out and then do some cleaning and tidying over here. The hose that I said I wasn't going to keep, I decided I am going to keep because I need a new hose for the reel that goes to the front of the house. That hose over there, it's just the it kinks like every three feet and it's starting to fall apart. So I'm going to get that set up because I need a hose in the front yard now that I have those planters on the front porch. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know. There's so many little things. Narrating through the little things is tricky. It's trickier than when just doing big projects. And it's a different type of struggle because with a big project you have to keep the pace up and keep it interesting but then when you're doing lots of little things it's not about being monotonous it's about trying to not be annoying <laughs> you're constantly changing subjects but that's how it is you're just doing lots of little things that fits i don't need do you guys want to see me repop this thing i don't think it's gonna be that interesting <laughs> this is not how you do things on a YouTube channel, you're supposed to be like, hey, this is going to be so cool. Watch me repot a plant. This poor house plant's been in this container for so long. Look at all those roots. I can't believe it's still alive. It's not that dramatic of a thing. I'm going to rip those off, pull it out, and stick it in a new pot. That's all there is to it. Did need a blade. Not all that shocked by that. This is going to be fine. Depending on the plant, you can pull those roots. Fetsias are pretty tough, so pulling on those roots, not a big deal. This is definitely root bound and that's okay still easy enough thing to work with just go through with the blade lightly put some x's in there it's just like i was talking about with the hibiscus earlier the main thing is just trying to keep the roots from continuing to wrap is there a rhyme or reason behind the x pattern i'm not really sure what's going on over here it's like a millipede fight going on can you see it what are you guys fighting about Wonder what they're fighting about. Maybe they weren't fighting. Maybe they were being very good friends. 
And maybe they weren't fighting. Maybe that was millipede love. Maybe there's about to be a lot more millipedes over here. I am going to plant this far enough down in here that I could drench it. That's too far. I need to add a little bit more soil than that. Okay, let's give this a try. I put some more in there. This is the same blend I was using for the hibiscus. Nothing crazy about it. Nothing special, just well-drained and organically rich and will hold on to moisture. There. Better. Much larger container. That should make for a much happier plant. I'm trying to do these things right now because, well, when I already have the wheelbarrow full, I also mentioned it's going to get very hot here very soon and I haven't watered yet, so may as well get some repotting done. That way I can get everything watered in appropriately. I noticed <laughs> that uh, I haven't planted the seashell up yet. I just have the flowers sitting in here. So I should probably do something about that. <sighs> Wish I had a thrower to go in the middle of that, but I don't. I think an asparagus fern would look cool in there. I guess none of that matters. It's done, that's all that matters. I think this looks nice. I like this setup right here. Once the Adenidia palm comes, whenever that's going to be, probably this week or next week, they're doing all kinds of stuff over here to get things fixed up and looking better. I started to do some cleanup over here. I just picked up the trash and recycling and moved the table. I'm not going to do much else without bringing y'all along and I'm probably not going to do that today because it's getting hot and the sun's right overhead. I might do it later this afternoon. I think what I should focus on now is to go ahead and get everything watered because that is important. It's hot out and it's going to be very hot. I just potted things up. They need water. And then get the hose set up in the front yard, water out in the front, and we'll pick up sometime later and do something with all this stuff over here. I also have the parts coming in the mail, hopefully the last of them is coming today, to get this fertilizer injector set up over here on the new Gorilla cart. Gorilla hose reel cart, you know what I mean. That would be great. It would be awesome if every time I water, I'm fertilizing, I'm getting off topic here. I'm gonna handle this and come back later and get something else done. Okay, this what this has nothing to do with anything. I was just watering plants and look at I thought y'all would want to see the precious moment. Look at these two. This is so sweet. The boys having snugs on the patio in the sun while it's 90 degrees. Doesn't seem too comfortable, but I guess they know what they're doing. There's a pool right there. If they want to go cool off. Alright. On to the next. The stuff is in. So want to go ahead and get this fertilizer thing set up. Showed up a day earlier than I thought it was going to. I've had this, talked about that, and uh, oh jeez, can't wait to take a shower. It's been a dirty day out here. I'm setting this up with quick connects and uh, some zip ties. Don't know if that's going to fully do the trick, but hopefully it will. If you don't know what this is, this was in a video not too terribly long ago. This is the Chapin 4702 fertilizer injector. It has a knob you can turn on the top to adjust the number of ounces of fertilizer. Per gallon, so you can just run this in line with your hose and not have to use a hose and sprayer. I'm curious to see how well this thing actually works. Like, I'm sure it'll distribute and do everything it's supposed to do, but will it be worth it? Is this going to be easier than just using a hose and sprayer? Because to me, the basket that the granules go in, if you're using a granular fertilizer, which I assume, like the Peters Classic or like Miracle Grow, any of those, you know, salt based ones would count as a granular, right? That's what goes in the basket. In the picture that they had for the listing, it looked like the whole thing was just filled to the brim with the fertilizer, but I don't, I don't know. I'll do some more reading up on that. I've with the hosen sprayer shape and ones just put the granules in the basket. Because it's supposed to be like a liquid or granular feeder. And it says with liquid, then you just pour it inside the whole thing. Same thing with this is with the hose and sprayer. And then anything granular, which I assume the salt-based fertilizers, you know what I'm talking about? I assume that that's would considered granular, not liquid, because it's definitely not a liquid, right? I don't know. It's been a long day thinking out loud here. The reason I have different quick connects on here, I decided to be cautious with this because sometimes when you're running fertilizers or any type of chemicals through something like this then that can be caustic it can wear things down over time and then end up not being able to get things to come apart so everything over here is plastic and i decided to just stick with the plastic on the end where the water is coming out on this end 
I'm sticking with brass because the leader hose that's going to lead into this is also brass. I learned when I got this gorilla cart or gorilla pose real thing over here that apparently if you have a brass fitting on your hose, you need to use only brass stuff to go with it. If you mix aluminum and brass or stainless and brass, they corrode and stick to each other, which is an issue that I have had many, many, many times and didn't know why, and now I do, so I just want to make sure those things all matched up and added up. So you can see what I'm going to do here is just take this. I'm going to hang that from right here, and then, well, you'll see. Just give me a minute. Oh, it's doing something, and it's not leaking. All I did was turn the water on. See what I did here? It's zip tied on. There's nothing sophisticated about this. I got zip ties that said they're good for 120 pounds. I'm sure I'll have to change these at some point. So the leader hose that goes to the house, quick connects in right there. This normally connects in right here. Then from the outflow, I have another leader hose right here with a quick connect on it. So when I want to fertilize, all I have to do is disconnect that hose from right there, pull it out, pop it in right there, and then take this in and pop it in place right there. That's it. And obviously, you need to make sure that this has the fertilizer in it. You're supposed to just... What is that? Why is it doing that? It said you crank it, you turn it. I don't have the directions anymore, so... Well, that can't be right. There's no way. That can't be right. What's that about? Don't do that. That's going to stain the patio. Okay, so I need to pull up the directions online. But in theory, what's going to happen now is when I turn the hose on, then I'll be able to just fertilize from... Nothing. Why is nothing happening? Oh, I forgot there was an on-off valve right here on this quick connect, so that makes the difference, having the water turned on. Uh, in theory, once, you know, all the water starts making its way through, there should be fertilizer in this. Don't know for sure, but that's what one would assume. That's the entire point here. But at the same time, you're supposed to be able to adjust this down. This is the knob right here. They said you turn that knob to adjust how much it releases, but if you turn it to the left, well, y'all saw it. Fertilizer juices come out and go flying everywhere, so that's not great. But it's bubbling. I can see stuff in there mixing and doing its thing, so I'm just going to assume that it works. I have the Peter's Classic Petunia Feed in there. It's one of my favorites. This is really not the time of day to be fertilizing, but, well, I've already started this, so... I guess I can give everything a little bit of a drink or a hold off till tomorrow. I don't think it'll clump up. It should be fine if I wait till morning, right? You think? I hope. Well, here's hoping because it just doesn't really make a lot of sense to fertilize right now. I'm just glad that I have this set up so tomorrow when I come out here, all I gotta do is pick up the hose, turn it on, and when I'm watering the plants, I'll also be fertilizing them. That is fantastic. The real question I have is how long is the fertilizer last? Am I gonna have to pop that thing off? fairly often to refill it. Like, will I be able to water everything in one go? I doubt it, based on the amount of fertilizer that I put in there. But the entire point here is that I will be able to fertilize essentially every single day just in a very low dose. Once I have the drip set up, I'll probably only be doing that once or twice a week. And, you know, when you're fertilizing, you're not doing a heavy, heavy drench, just giving them a drink, a little sip, so they get a little taste of fertilizer in very small doses, which is more frequently, and that should be good for them. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited about this. It's simplifying things and streamlining them. I'm all about that. I love that. Having the time of his life. It's the next day. Continuing on the trend of just random clip after random clip. Finishing off though with the uh, Chapin fertilizer injector. I did some digging. By digging I mean I just Googled the model that I bought, and it very clearly said that this one mixes one ounce per gallon of water, and the next models up, which are more of a tub with different tubes that go in them, that work through a system that works, what is it, the thing called? Venturi action. So you have multiple tubes coming out, and like an inlet, so the pressure moving through causes a suction, and you can adjust that. Sorry, that's so much hand. You can adjust that one from one to three ounces per gallon. This one, it's set at one ounce. That knob in the top, you can quickly add liquid into it. If that's what you're using, a liquid fertilizer, I will be using the granular because I really like it. I did mention that I was using the Jax Classic Petunia Feed. Thought I would show it to you. It's a 26, 22. I like this one 
for a lot of reasons. One, I just like the 26, 22 proportions that it has. Sorry, the beach ball's getting hit. It's making all kinds of noise. That is really great for plants like hibiscus, where you want nitrogen, low phosphorus, and high potassium. I also really like the magnesium boron, copper, the iron, manganese, and the zinc. This is very similar to their palm fertilizer, and uh, that's why I use it, because I feel like I'm getting more bang for my buck. I don't have to buy multiple fertilizers. I'm not gonna bother buying the separate palm fertilizers anymore because I'm already using the granular, the great palm, the stuff you just shake into the surface of the soil about every two weeks, so once a month. And then for liquid, this is good. This is plenty good enough for the palms. It's great for the hibiscus, get nice green foliage, should have healthy plants that flower a lot. I like it. And it says to mix this at a tablespoon per gallon of water. So I could go inside, get the scale, and measure a tablespoon of the grains and see if that ends up being an ounce. And if it is, then this is being fed exactly how it should be. I doubt a tablespoon of this stuff is weighs an ounce. I highly doubt it. But that's okay because, like I said, I'm intending for this to be something where I'm fertilizing at a low dose, but more frequently. Things tend to work better for the plants that way. So that's where we are with all of that. I've watered about... 75% of the patio so far. Today's the day. The summer's here. 8.30 and already close to 80 degrees outside, which I love. But later on today, it's supposed to be like 96. Might be pushing 100 over the weekend, and then maybe things will cool down. I don't know, but basically, the summer weather's here. Which means that there are a few things that I should get done before the heat gets here. I was getting ready to water over... That was very aggressive. To water over here the leftover annuals or the annuals I haven't gotten to yet and then I was thinking I should actually probably go ahead and plant as many of these as possible and then move the rest of them because this spot over here it just bakes in the afternoon sun so it's time to get this space over there cleared out cleaned up so that those plants aren't going to be frying in the sun and then maybe do some cleaning and tidying over here I already did a bunch of it yesterday but I don't know, with the heat, I think my main priority should be to whatever needs to be planted to just go ahead and get that done. I wasn't really prepared for this. I was just pointing over here saying I'm going to do all these things and cut over here and I've just been standing here going, uh, well, now what? So a lot of what I have left over here are things that I'm going to be using for projects at other people's homes. So I can't just plant up like these wave petunias. Those are for someone else, but I can move them to a more appropriate spot where this spot is right now it's pretty intense afternoon sun and uh, which is fine for white petunias but I, I said and because i was going to point out that there are some shade loving plants over here not many but some plants that are still in smaller containers really and would prefer a reprieve in the afternoon so basically i think i'm just gonna be shifting a lot of this stuff from right here to over on that other side i also need to repot this lutea right here. need to bump it up into a larger container, but this is the last of my potting soil, and I noticed when I was watering that a lot of the soil around this Robolini settled down, so we need to top that off too. But I guess first things first, right, is to just pick this stuff up, move it someplace where they'll get morning sun, afternoon shade. I'll be able to maintain them better until that project is ready to happen, and uh, they won't be scorched by the afternoon sun, hopefully, right? And after that's done, then I can, I'll be able to work my way even to get in to that rub wings right now. I, I can't even get to it. And as far as the littles that are left over here, I have a few things left that need to be repotted. I need to get that polar green in the ground, which in order to do that, I actually have to like pull all the mulch out from over here. I don't, I don't want to do that right now. So maybe I'll just pull the mulch from one side. I don't know. I'm going to figure that out. I need to do this sooner than later though, because I also have a box of fish coming in the mail today and two boxes of plants that I think I'll talk about in a video separate from this one because it, there's already so much going on in here. I don't need to add plant unboxings to this video, but you already know what it is, right? I mentioned in last week's video that there were some bromeliads coming. Two of those are coming today. And then uh, some palms. I mentioned, I think it was in last week's video, that I'd ordered some VGI palms, some Montgomery palms, and another coconut. That was before I went to the nursery and they had coconut palms, so now I'm going to have an excess of coconut palms, which is not something 
I'm gonna complain about because I love coconut palms. But uh, yeah, again, I think that would just be too much for this video. Don't need all that one thing, one thing, one video. This is pretty. I like how that's looking. Nice cart full of petunias. Nobody's gonna be mad at that. I also need to give some of these petunias a rejuvenation print. <laughs> Look at this one. It's seen better days. I need to cut that back and hit it with that petunia fertilizer, probably in a full dose. But yeah, it's not very happy. I don't mind those there. Every time I turn the camera on today, it's a ball. It's flying around, getting smacked by the fountains, making those annoying noises. Oh, the fuchsia. I cannot believe how well this thing has held up. I talked about it when I got it, that I looked up the variety wind chimes. It's supposed to be one that's really good for heat and humidity. So far, it's been pretty good. But I'm not going to push it. I'm talking upper 90s today and over the weekends. I think the best thing to do would be to move that in the acanthus. Yeah, this thing, it's been getting way too much sun. They are very particular with their lighting when you live someplace with a lot of temperature swings. Huh. I know the hibiscus will be fine right here, but ultimately I wanted them over here, but I haven't cleaned this. I'm gonna clean this spot up real quick and come back. So it's just gonna bug me until it's done. So I'm just gonna do it and then get back to moving things. Huh? What do we think? Okay, it's still a mess. I'm not done, calm down. I'm aware there's still stuff all over the place, but I got the big things moved out of the way. Ultimately, it's not the point of this project right now, because I'm supposed to be moving plants that were back there. You know, everything I started with, that's what I need to be focused on. But I wanted to get this cleared out because some of the plants I want to have over here, ultimately, and I was hoping to do this on like a video where I just make the whole space look really nice and get it all, but I just, it's not happening. Just don't have time for all that. I still need to find a spot for this Rostrata yucca over there, which needs a repot. This thing, it's getting loose in here. I think that it had some root dieback last winter and I think it needs to get into a new blend, into a new mix. So I'm tempted to keep it right there for now, but in the long run, I would prefer to not have anything on top of this wall other than the deck planters, the tall boy ones, and just a few plants on each side. Sometimes this gets out of control and it looks beautiful <laughs> usually when that happens, but just for peace of mind and tranquility, I don't want to look around and see clusters and clumps of things. But, well, that's probably how this is going to end up going for this video anyways, but ultimately that's not how I would like it for it to end. Yeah, progress. Progress is good. See, just moving that big blue pot from up there to down there and tossing the coconut in it, that looks so much better. I really like the gold Malayan coconuts with the blue, or even a spindle, just something with some orange or some yellow in it. Looks so nice with that blue pottery. This is dumb. This shouldn't be sitting here just hanging out in the middle. That makes no sense at all. Maybe right here would work for now. And then put something in that's not going to be too tall and obstruct things. Why am I doing I need to move this. I've got to move the Moose of Florida still. And I think this would do better more into a shady spot. Can I pick this up with one hand? I'm just wondering because the pot's really hot. Yeah. This is fine. Get this over here where it'll get dappled light. I think that'll be better for it for now. This isn't permanent, this is just for right now. Um, the Rojo Zabrina. I I got this with the intention of potting it up over with the Edenidia palm that I don't have because the people at the greenhouse killed it. They're supposed to bring a new one maybe this week or next week. I don't know when it'll be here. That's why there's still a lot of these things over here is because they're intended to be worked in over there with some of the plants. Uh, I don't know, let's move it somewhere else. Okay, I went ahead and just put that over there with the moose of Florida. I'm trying to keep things clustered so that watering is easier since I don't have the drip going yet, but should be going soon enough. I think now I really just need to find something to do with that yucca and then my little windmill palm over here. That shouldn't even be on the ground, right? A pot that small should be up high, but I just said I don't want anything up here. I'd like for the front of this to be open. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to move them. I don't know where I'm going to put them. I'm just going to pick it up and set it down somewhere else. Okay. Much better. I know I said I didn't want to keep anything on top of it, but I don't really know where else to put this guy right now that I feel like I will <laughs> not get it lost amongst the chaos. And uh, I really like that pot. 
threw a few coconuts, I'll throw some seashells around it to make sure it looks intentional that it's there. Like I said, I'm trying to keep everything in clusters to make it easier to water. That's why I have you in know, clusters there, the white petunias over there. I moved that Rostrata yucca over here with the others because, well, filtered light. I fear that'll be better for it since it's got something going on with its root system. That'll just have to be a good spot for it for now until I can repot it. I'm waiting on repotting it until I can find time to go out to the construction place, the place out here called New Concrete, where I can get some really fine, nice white sand to use to mix up as a blend for the coconuts, the yuccas, and anything else that needs really sharp drainage. So that'll wait. It's also why I'm not potting up these new coconuts that I got. And I have another one coming in the mail, so what's the point just now? And I also just remembered that that's the last of my potting soil over there. And I was going to pot up that lutea and backfill this Robolini palm, but I have three palms coming in the mail today that I'm nearly positive are going to be shipped bare root. So, yeah, I'll figure that out when it's time. <laughs> one thing at a time. There's still a slab of marble over here. This is an extra piece of the Carrera that goes around the pool and it's it's very heavy and I don't feel like taking it down to the basement right now and it's piping hot so it can stay there I have one two three of these smaller containers that I can pop something in to clear some space out from over here I'd prefer to leave these bananas right here because they're adjusting I don't want to keep moving them around the hibiscus I think that's what started all this let's move from these hibiscus this one none of the flowers are open well, it's called Mrs. President, and it has really pretty pink flowers on it. Kind of like the seminal pink, but different. It's a, maybe a lighter shade with some more orange in it. That's how I would describe it. And then this one over here that I absolutely love. Love this one. It's one of the Tradewind Hibiscus. Don't remember the name. I found it whenever I was talking about this plant, and, well, I've forgotten since then. It's like Mandarin Orange or Mandarin Breeze, something like that. That orange is going to look nice with the blue in those containers. What about this one? Still, so I got this little guy right here. What am I going to put in there? Maybe a Chinese fan palm? I think that would look good over there. Some nice green in front of everything. Big broad green fronds. I know people are probably cringing at the way I pick this up. Don't worry. It's fine. Okay, well, it's blocking the hibiscus, so I need to do a rotation there. But I like it. That's good. Actually, I think it's a little bit too big. I don't like it there. Never mind. I wouldn't mind it over here around the corner in a taller pot where that's coming up and accenting things. Yeah, that's much better. I like that a lot more. What about the Austin Pretty Limits Oleander? I think this would appreciate some more sun. I do like having it over here. I love the way an oleander looks right by this post, but it just, it's not growing the way it should. I think it would be happier with some more sunlight. And as you can, it's buried. It's saying, as you can see, it's buried. I stopped talking mid-sentence, stopped recording mid-sentence. Sure why I did that. And I'm going to have to get this out in a week or so anyway, so that I can get the Adenidia palm back here. So I may as well just go ahead and move some of the ones out of here that I wanted to move. I, did, I really like it there, though. No, go ahead and move it. I have another oleander that has been... A more reliable bloomer and I'll put that one over here I'd say for obvious reasons that's not going to work is it you can see this definitely needs a repot anyway so I should go take it and put wait oh no it's stuck put it with the plants that need repots that makes the most sense especially since it's one that I will want to use that nice sandy blend with so I can hang out over here Just tore that whole area up for absolutely no reason oh well like I said, I was going to be doing that in a week or so. Anyways, yeah, see this other oleander? Look at it. Just thriving. Looking fantastic. Lutea, I can move this. I want to get this over by the queen palm. As I said, I wanted to get this repotted, but I need to make sure I have enough soil for the palms that are coming in the mail and the pygmy date palm first. Ultimately, I want this to be right over here, like so, but in a larger container. So we'll have those nice big lime green and gold veined leaves behind everything this other rostrata is sitting there i had to chop away at this one because it had some root rot and uh, it's restarting itself so i thought that was a decent spot for it because it's leaning against something i hope keep it straight while it gets rooted back out okay i could pop a heliconia in the orange pot that might look nice i'm thinking i should move this yellow one over here because there's a lot of color going on over here and there's not much going but then there's gonna be more color i need another yellow pot that's the problem 
need to find another yellow pot. Oh, I'm not just going to magically pull a yellow pot out of thin air, so I just have to live with it like this for now. But I do still think that... Actually, no, that's a yucca. It's a gloriosa. It should be totally fine sitting out there in the sun right next to that coconut. Those are actually very compatible next to each other. The heliconia for the orange. Huh. It's an option, but it's going to stick up in front of the pot, which I said I didn't want them to do. Actually, I think it might be too big. Eh, no, that's a close enough fit. That works. It does stick up in front of the pot, but you know what? Things are staying clustered the way I want them to, so for right now, it's fine. And I could always scoot it right behind that and then pull the hibiscus in front of it. For now, I just wanted things clustered and things moved out of the way so that everything just, it's more aesthetically pleasing. It's going to be easier to water this way. And when that heat rolls in, I'm not going to have to stress as much about everything baking in the afternoon sun. Well, except for all this stuff. This stuff I haven't moved yet. Most of this will die if I don't move it right now. Fuchsia. No idea where I'm going with it. I'm just walking. We'll see what happens. Oh, look at that. That's perfect. Right there. Right in the cluster. Filtered light. That'll be good. Decanthus. I'm going to keep that right there so I don't forget that I want to plant it, basically. Just like four feet this way. Doesn't make any sense. I had the Chinese fan palm right here and said, no, I don't like that. It's blocking the pot. And then I set this over here and I blocked the pot. Why did I do that? Doesn't make sense when I can take the hibiscus and put the hibiscus over here in this orange container like that and then put you right here. Yes, that makes more sense. Am I overthinking things? Probably. Okay, now all the little stuff. I'm probably thinking that it would be a good idea to take these and just put them on the tops of some of the plants that I have over there in the shade. That way I know they're going to get watered because I'll be watering the cluster and uh, they're still easy access. I'm going to be doing a lot of my potting moving forward over here in this area. Right here. Package. Just got a notification package was delivered. I have to go check that because I'm expecting fish in the mail today too. This is good. Made a very big dent here. I have some alyssum left over here. I think I would pot them up in here with this dracaena. Pardon the voice crack. Don't know why that happened. It would help to cover up the sides of the container because I don't think I have a cash pot that this black pot will fit in and I don't really mind looking at nursery pots but I figure since I have these may as well these are the snow princess I believe and I have another one or two actually and I think they're called blushing bride I'm just gonna fill this in with these it's just totally unnecessary but uh, I have them I got them for hanging baskets and then decided that I wasn't going to be doing hanging baskets because, well, there's not really anywhere to hang them because there's palm trees in front of all the spots where I could put them. So, uh, yeah, may as well do that, right? Makes some sense, kind of. There we go. That'll do. It's, um, it's a lot. These are all lobularies that get pretty big, but that was the point, right? It's going to have them come over and cover up that pot. I won't even know that they're in a nursery container. I don't know why that's bothered me. I have plenty of plants that are still in nursery containers, just in black pots all over the place, but I don't... Now, for some reason, it's just bugging me. You gotta admit, that looks a lot better, right? Also, it can be much easier to keep these hydrated when they're in an actual pot. These little things, it just, it takes so long to keep them watered when it's hot outside. And now I just, I have a few little scrap plants over there, and I think I'm just about done over here. It's looking pretty good. All right, look at, look at, I know, there's still dirt, but it's improved. I did, I set another plant on the other side. I just thought that that would be a good spot for the diamantina look over here yeah I, okay i still need to move the gorilla cart but things are open again all that's left up here are things that can take the heat and the milkweed i need to move the milkweed but it's mostly just yuccas agaves the last thing to do is to get the pharaoh's dream call it casey it was in here i already pulled it out potted up or planted up in this corner here the pharaoh's dream is one that's supposed to be very hardy has a very dramatic leaf. It's cupped with white veining and a hint of pinkish red in the middle. If you don't know what I'm talking about, these are plants that I got from Brian's Botanicals a couple, well not a couple months ago, sometime in the last several weeks. I ordered one, they sent two with a nice little note saying we sent two because they're really small. And I was like, well hey, I appreciate that. I planted one up on the other side of the garden and I just pulled this one out of the container. I dug a hole over there and pulled it out and looked at the tag and it's a, it's not the right plant. Pharaoh's Mask Red, which is another plant they sell that's very expensive. It's a Pharaoh's Mask with red veining. 
not a plant I care about at all. I had really been looking forward to having the Pharaoh's Dream over here. I don't, <laughs> not to be a brat, but I don't want this. I don't know what to do with it. I'm gonna jam it in a pot somewhere. Maybe over here with these begonias. It's gotta go someplace where the drip's gonna hit it really, really well because the Pharaoh's Mask type colocasias, they like things wet. A lot of colocasias like things wet. The Pharaoh's Dream would be a better fit for that spot. So I guess what I will do is wait for the one that I have to get larger and put up some offshoots and transplant an offshoot over there and just know, do something else with this one. Heck, I could go ahead and pot it up with the ones that are down here underneath the Alexander palm. They'd be all blended together, but that might be kind of fun. I'm fine with that. Like I said, this isn't a plant that I wanted. I don't care how expensive it is. That has nothing to do with anything as far as I'm concerned. I just, well, now it's just something I have to figure out what to do with. Yeah, <laughs> that'll work. It's in the ground, in a spot that holds on to a lot of moisture. It'll be fine there. I'm sure it's an awesome plan. It's just, you know, I had something planned out in my head. Here's the Pharaoh's Dream. If you don't know what I was talking about, this is the one that they sent me, and that's what it looks like. There's its picture right there on the tag. Isn't it beautiful? It hasn't started to get that color on it yet, and it doesn't have any offshoots, but as soon as it does start to pop out, I'm gonna pluck on pluck one of them. <laughs> I don't know what that was supposed to mean. And then plant it up over where I dug that hole. So, okay. I had to cut an entire banana out of there to make room to dig that hole for that thing. I'm not thrilled about this. Not the kind of mix-up you want to have. Okay. I'm good. I don't know about y'all. I feel like <laughs> I got an awful lot done in this video and am finally caught up. Finally. Got things reorganized put in places where they're going to be easier to water and things that make more sense now that it's starting to get warm outside, things will be getting morning sun, afternoon shade, and uh, all this. I still need to blow the deck off and wash it, obviously. This needs to be cleared out for whenever those queen palms show up. Well, the one queen palm's here, but yeah, that's a whole thing. You'll see it when it happens. Okay, real quick, before we go, bromeliads came. I'm going to go ahead and pop this open and see how they look. These are from Etsy seller Green Millennium. I ordered two, but there's one pot in here, so... I don't really know what to expect. Cram them both into one? No, oh, no, it's just one. I ordered two. Why is it, what happened? Well, never mind. Apparently I only ordered one of these, which is okay. I don't think that I needed two of them, so this'll do. I had just gotten the one, apparently, to put in the front of this pot that the queen palm is in. It's not quite as big as I was hoping it would be, but that's all right. I'll get the tape off of this. I'm not going to pot it up right now. I'm not going to plant it up in there right now is what I mean to say because well it's a little bit smaller than I thought it was going to be so when I plant it up I want to make sure that I have some fillers and other things to go around because it's bromeliad you know I guess I am growing it as an annual we'll see if it survives the winter in the greenhouse with the queen palm I'm not going to pull it out but it's not going to grow like an annual right I'm not expecting a lot of maturity out of this plant this year maybe it'll double in size but I would be shocked okay I <laughs> know this is probably a chaotic video it was really good for me. I got so much done. Like I said, I feel like I am finally caught up out here. Fell behind for a few weeks with all the stuff I talked about at the beginning of last Saturday's video. And now back in a place of, okay, things are making sense again. Especially once the rest of the palm trees get here. This is kind of wild. I've never had to wait until mid to late June to finish planting up the palm trees. But stuff happens. I'm not upset about it. I really didn't have time for those palm trees to be here right now anyway. So it's fine. Doesn't even matter. Ugh, you can really feel the heat kicking in. I'm gonna go. Time to go inside, wash off, cool off, get the dog inside. I think it's even too hot for him. And oh, I just remembered, I haven't finished watering yet. I'm gonna put the dog inside, finish watering. Then you get it. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Comment down below, say hi. Pardon the plastic coconuts. What's going on in your gardens? Got a lot going on out here. A big chunk of this is for other things though and all this other stuff just little fillers and leftovers that I'll use when the rest of the palm trees get here I'm pretty sure I already said all that don't need to repeat it okay as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye, bye.